Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I am back with a full brand review-ish. Um, I cannot in any way take credit for discovering this house. I had a viewer email me. I'm not going to say her name because I didn't get permission to do so beforehand, but I will tell you a lovely uh, lady emailed me and asked me if I had ever heard of this house. Let me tell you the house we are talking about. This house is called Korloff Paris. Um, so she emailed me asking if I knew anything about this house, if I had ever heard of them. Uh, I have not, and so I was immediately intrigued. Um, she went and she really started doing some digging and researching of this house, and she sent, uh, again through email, sent to me her findings. So um, again, I cannot take any credit for finding any of this out or for discovering this house. She, uh, she came back and told me that the perfumer of this house actually, and I can't remember his name right off the bat, but uh, the perfumer for this house actually trained under Frederick Mal. And I will tell you that these are incredibly affordable fragrances. I think I paid about 30, somewhere between anywhere between $29 and $33 is what I paid for each one. I do have seven different fragrances here. We're going to go through all of them. I have had a chance to um, test them all and um, yeah, they all perform pretty much the same. I've got one beast in here and then the other ones are all pretty much middle of the road. Um, I'll talk, we'll talk about that though as we go through each one. So let's just jump right in. Uh, the first, so there are kind of two different types of fragrances. There are the ones that come in these kind of boxes, and there are ones that come in these kind of boxes. So, um, and the bottles look different too, which you will see again as we go through each one. Um, I can tell you that I prefer the ones that come in these kind of boxes more than I prefer these ones. Uh, these to me, they smell like um, our moth fragrances, but there's just something a little bit elevated about these. Um, so they are kind of in that same vein, but these are, there's just something about these that's just a little bit higher quality. It's just a little bit, um, they're a little bit more complex. Um, they're just, they're a little bit elevated in comparison to the Armoff fragrances. So again, let's just go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to talk about each one that I have and I will give you kind of a mini lowdown on each one. So the first one that I picked up and I of course blind bought all of these just based on notes. Um, the, and if there was, there's not a lot of information about these. There's not a ton on Fragrantica about them. There's not, um, there's just not a lot of information about these, which was why I also was so intrigued, uh, because I feel like they're pretty darn good perfumes for the price point, and, um, I feel like more people should know about them. So the first one that I picked up is called Gala a la Opera. This is what the bottle looks like, um... The lids, they're not, they're just kind of like a plastic, a kind of jewel or gem shaped lid. Uh, the bottle is nice and heavy. Well, it, it's, it's like middle of the road. It's not like super light and chintzy feeling, but it's not like super nice, thick, heavy glass either, but it's perfectly fine. Um, so this one, and if, uh, if when I was looking on Fragrantica for these, there were other um, perfumes that people were comparing them to, like the This Reminds Me of section, I went ahead and wrote that down so I could let you know. Um, so Gala a la Opera, this reminds me of something. I can't put my finger on it. It's definitely something that I own. I want to say maybe like La Nuit Tresor. I think that that's what it's reminding me of. But this perfume came out in 2019. This is Pink Pepper, Magnolia, White Chocolate, Heliotrope, Benzoin, Cashmere Wood, Patchouli, Ambroxan, and Vanilla. This is a sweet, um, it's a sweet fragrance. It does remind me of La Nuit Tresor. Uh, you get a lot of the white chocolate in this one. You can see the spray on these two, you guys. Beautiful. And they're all like that. They all have beautiful sprayers on them. So nice. 
So these, and I will tell you, with just about every single one of these, um, I went ham with them. I sprayed 10, 12, 14 sprays of these all over skin, clothing, um, just trying to give it a really good test. There's one in here, which I will leave for the end, that I couldn't do that with because it is an absolute beast and it doesn't need more than a few sprays. But this is really pretty. It's sweet. There is no oud listed in this, but I swear I smell just a hint of oud in the background. It's not like... What is it? What? Come on, you. Oh, there she is. That's Flower back there. Oh, Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Can you jump? Come here. Come here, baby. Come here, Flower. Come here. Oh, come here. Oh, this is Flower Girl. She is a little bit skittish. She's my baby sweetest cat in the world okay back to the perfume so um sweet definitely i definitely get the white chocolate the sweetness from the white chocolate is very very present uh like i say there is no oud listed for this but i swear i smell it in the background it's not overbearing it's not um it's just barely present, but it's just giving the slightest hint. So I'm definitely getting the cashmere wood. I'm not smelling a ton of patchouli. Ugh, it's just, it's really, really nice. It really reminds me, it's along the lines of La Nuit Tresor, um, something like that. It's pretty sweet. Not overly complex. It's got more notes in it than what I can actually smell. It's, but it's a nice one. If you like perfumes like La Nuit Tresor or, um, you know, just sweet perfumes like that, you would really like this one. Uh, this is not my favorite, for sure, um, but I also don't dislike it either. So, again, that one is Gala à l'Opera. Okay, so we're going to go through the um, ones in the these types of boxes and bottles first. This one is called Take Me to the Moon. So I bought this one as much for the name as I did for the notes, I was just kind of enamored with the name of this one. Uh, it comes in kind of this really pretty white iridescent um, pink bottle. Well, it's a white bottle. It's got like an iridescent pink kind of shift to it. So this one I really enjoyed. This one is called, first of all, this one came out in 2015. This is pear, bergamot, peach, jasmine, osmanthus, red rose, sandalwood, patchouli, and white musk. This apparently smells like Ange au Demon Le Secret um, by Givenchy, which I have never smelled that one before. But this one I actually really enjoy. This is a little bit lighter. It's a little bit less sweet than the last one we smelled. You definitely get the... A little bit of the peach but it's not the type of peach that I dislike it's a peach that smells kind of fresh and juicy I'm sorry if you can hear my cat over here scratching <laughs> she's or she's licking herself but her she's digging her claws into the printer so yeah this um, you definitely get the pear in the top you can get you can smell the osmanthus a touch of the jasmine. Um, this is like a sweet, um, but not overly sweet. This is nowhere near as sweet as the last one we smelled. But just a bright, crisp, semi-sweet, fruity floral fragrance. This is perfect for this time of year. Um, and I will tell you with these ones and pretty much all I'll tell I will talk about the uh, performance right now and it's pretty much across the board for all of them um, these are you really have to overspray with these ones um, I really had to overspray with these I would spray like I say 12 14 sprays all up and down my arms uh, all over my neck my chest my back um, in my hair on clothing on skin everywhere I sprayed it and you will smell it um, 
pretty well for probably the first hour or so and then they really kind of start wearing closer to the skin uh, but you they're they're always present so um, eight hours later you will still smell them but they're just not projecting a ton at that point they're definitely wearing closer to the skin um, and they but other people will smell you they're just not gonna smell you from you know 10 feet away they'll they'll smell you when they get you know close or if you walk by them it's that kind of a uh, it's that kind of performance um, for all of these and like I say I do have one beast we'll leave that one okay the next one I picked up is called uh, Un Soir à Paris I'm the worst I wish that I could pronounce um, French words or any words for that matter better but I can't <laughs> so okay this is of these three in these types of bottles this is probably my favorite um, I think it's my favorite out of the bottle but I think it's my least favorite on my skin actually because this one I think did something weird on my skin yeah but it wasn't like it wasn't unpleasant if that makes any sense it was you know when you spray perfume on and you know that it doesn't smell disgusting, it doesn't smell off or anything, but you could just tell that it's not jiving great with your chemistry, that, um, you know, if if it were being sprayed on somebody that had chemistry that it really clicked with, it would smell a lot better. That's what this one smells like. Even though it's it doesn't smell bad on me, it's just one of those situations where I can tell that if my chemistry were a little bit different, um, it would be clicking with me better. I know that sounds weird, but... Okay, so Un Soir, Soir, Un Soir à Paris came out in 2014. This is bergamot, grapefruit, coriander, rose absolute, jasmine absolute, white peach, marshmallow patchouli, and tonka. And those base notes are what got me. Uh, marshmallow patchouli and tonka. I was all over it. So this one... This one, you get the marshmallow, the sweetness from the marshmallow kind of right away. Oh, gosh, it, this one's so nice out of the bottle. So you're getting the grapefruit, but it doesn't smell like grapefruit, if that makes any sense. It's like, it's like you're getting the freshness and the crispness from the grapefruit but without it actually smelling like grapefruit. I know that sounds weird. This one is really being tempered by that coriander. This one is, it's got like a spicy edge to it, but without smelling very spicy. So this way, this one in a way reminds me of Miss Dior from Christian Dior, but it's not it's not like a super dupe for it or anything. It's just, it reminds me of that scent. It's really, really pretty. It's fresh smelling. It's crisp. It's not overly floral. It's not overly sweet. You are getting the marshmallow in it, but it's not an overly sweet marshmallow. You can get the patchouli, but it's not like a dirty patchouli or a hippie patchouli or like an earthy patchouli. It's just adding an element of spice to it. This one's really nice, but yeah, this one, um, it just didn't, it just didn't jive with my chemistry as well as I know it would with somebody else's. So anyways, that one is Un Soir à Paris, and um, that's a nice one. Okay, now we're going to get into the ones that I enjoyed the most. These are the ones that come in the boxes like this, and um, all of the bottles are very similar. This one is called Majestic Tuberose, and this one I was like, really excited about because um, when I was going through these and looking at them up on Fragrantica, this one was, a lot of people were saying that it's a very different take on Tuberose, and as you know, I have a lot of tuberose fragrances, but they are quite similar, um, a lot of them. A lot of them are very traditional tuberose uh, fragrances. And this one is a little bit different. This one has some very interesting notes in it. This is mandarin, orange, cardamom, pink pepper, tuberose, ylang-ylang, cloves, cashmere wood, sandalwood, 
and patchouli. So it is, this is like a spicy kind of darker tuberose. You definitely get the tuberose, but it's not overly sweet and it's definitely, uh, it's definitely being accompanied by the cardamom and the cloves. It's beautiful. This one did beautiful things on my skin as well. This one was compared to, on Fragrantica, this one was compared to Nuit de Tuberus by L'Artisan Perfumer. So, um, yeah, this one definitely has like a more expensive smell to it. This does not smell like a $33 bottle of perfume at all. And I really, really enjoy these bottles. I think they're very pretty. This one is definitely like, again, a nice heavy glass. It's got like a beautiful ombre going on, um, lighter at the bottom, getting very dark at the top. And it's like this beautiful kind of plummy red color. It's so, so pretty. Or like almost like a dark raspberry color. Again, the lid is kind of the same with that kind of gold gem cut. It's, you know, it's not super, super cheap feeling, but it's definitely not like a heavy lid. Uh, but yeah, this one is really, really nice. This one I loved on my skin. Um, again, I got a little bit... These ones perform just a little bit better than the ones in the other bottles. Um, these ones hang around uh, a little bit longer. They pro I shouldn't say hang around a little bit longer. They project for a little bit longer. You'll probably get like an hour and a half to two hours of some pretty good projection with these ones before they start wearing closer to the skin. Ugh, this is beautiful though. This is like a kind of dark, spicy tuberose. I don't have any fragrances like this in my collection. I'm really, really excited about this one. This is a great tuberose for like fall and winter. Though I think it could be worn anytime. Um, I definitely think you could wear this year round. But particularly in the fall and winter with the cloves and the cardamom and just the warmth of those spices mixed with the tuberose. It's just really, really beautiful. This was definitely, um, I think this is number two. There's one that I like just a little bit better, but this one is just, ooh, this is a stunner. I love it. So again, that one is called Majestic Tuberose and uh, one of my favorites. Okay, now we're going to talk about my favorite. So this was my all-time favorite of all the ones that I ordered, possibly because it's this time of year and it's perfect for the heat. Uh, this is called Gold. Um, okay, so this, is, this one is Gold. And this, I really love the bottle on this one as well. So I really love the bottle on this one. It's just a beautiful, clear bottle with these kind of gold, um, just this gold kind of design on it. Really, really beautiful. Same kind of lid again. Now, this is beautiful. This is a beautiful summertime fragrance. This really, really reminds me of uh, Tom Ford's Soleil Blanc, which I adore that fragrance. One of these days I'm going to pick up a full bottle of it, but this one is a little bit uh, fresher, airier, if that makes any sense. It's a little bit brighter smelling. Um, Soleil Blanc, for being a kind of summer perfume, can wear a little bit heavy because it's got, I think it's got pistachio in it. I, I'm pretty sure it's got a pistachio accord in it, which can give it some heaviness and it's pretty sweet. And this one is as well, but this has a lightness to it and an airy quality to it that's just gorgeous. This is a beautiful, sweet, tropical smelling fragrance, though it's not too sweet. It's gorgeous. It really, This is summer in a bottle, and I know it doesn't look like a summer fragrance from the bottle, but oh my gosh. This is the most beautiful summer fragrance, and I wore this all day yesterday, and though it wore quite close to the skin after probably the first hour, I could smell it all day. My clothes smelled like it all day. It was, it's just a gorgeous fragrance. It's going to be incredible in the high heat. Uh, beautiful. So this one came out in 2012. This is Gardenia, Coconut, Strawberry, Frangipani, Tiare, Jasmine, Vanilla, Musk, and Cedar. Um, 
This people were saying it smells like terracotta. I, I have terracotta as well. Terracotta is much, much more floral than this. And again, terracotta is a little bit heavier smelling than this. It is also not quite as sweet as this. This is just a gorgeous, ugh, and with that spray again. This is beautiful. I really get the frangipani in this one. More so than in a lot of fragrances that have frangipani in them. I really do get it a lot in this fragrance. This is just beautiful. This is probably, of all of the summer fragrances that I have that are kind of in this family, this I think is by far my favorite. As far as the frangipani, tiare flower, um, coconut, that kind of mix, this is my favorite because this has a beautiful, airy quality to it. I just love it so much. I could go on and on about this fragrance. I love it so much. So again, that is gold. Okay, the next one we're going to talk about is another one that I really enjoy. I really enjoy all of the ones that come in this, that I got that come in these bottles. This one is called Korloff Paris Miss. Um, and this one is a really pretty, it comes in a really pretty box like that that you open. Um, and this has a little charm on it. It's a really... It's a really pretty, um, very light pink, well, the liquid, I should say, is a very pretty light pink. It's got a very pretty rose gold cap, and it does have this little um, kind of charm hanging down on it. It's just really, really pretty. <sighs> this one I love. I'm wearing this one today. This one, probably of all of them, this one has the worst performance. It's so beautiful. I'm going to just spray some more on. And you can see I go ham with these. Just spraying. Because you can. They're, um, they're not super overpowering. They're just beautiful, light, airy fragrances. And I just ate it a little bit. <laughs> so, But I love this. The combination of notes in here is something that I am familiar with, but it's I don't have anything like it in my collection but I know I've smelled something like it before. Uh, I really want more people to get into these fragrances. I want more information on Fragrantica. I want to see people um, compare them because that's one thing that I'm really, really bad at is smelling something and knowing exactly what it smells like to me. Um, okay, so this one came out just last year in 2019. This is Cassis, Apple, Ylang Ylang, ma uh, Mandarin Orange, Lily of the Valley, Rhubarb, White Lotus, Musk, Vanilla, and White Cedar Extract. You really get the beautiful tart juiciness from the rhubarb. And the rhubarb mixed with the cassis is just such a beautiful combination. I'm getting the sweetness from the apple. There's a creamy quality to this as well. It must be coming from... Oh, the vanilla. So the musk and vanilla just create this really beautiful creaminess, but like the gold, this one remains very light, very airy. It's not overly tart from the rhubarb. It's not overly sweet from the apple. Uh, it's just a perfect blend of fragrances. Um, not groundbreaking. None of these are really groundbreaking. The, the one that I would say is probably the most unique is the Majestic Tuberose for sure, but um, these are beautiful and for the price I just think that the quality is really nice. This one you're not going to get very much time out of at all. Like I think I sprayed it on a couple hours ago and before I just sprayed it on again, I couldn't even, I could smell it on my clothing, I couldn't smell it on my skin anymore, but I don't even care because I love the way this smells. If you are looking for a rhubarb fragrance, um, or if you've never had a rhubarb fragrance before but you want to try one uh, but aren't sure if you're going to like it or not, I think this would be a great place to start because this one is very mild smelling. Um, this is a crowd pleaser. I think this is one that a lot of people would like. But it's still a little bit unique smelling. Um, I, I was really afraid when I first got this one because it's called Miss. And I don't know why I thought it was going to be really generic smelling, but it's not at all. It's really, really beautiful. So again, that one is called Miss, and I really enjoy that one. 
And then I saved the best performing one for last. This one is literally a beast. Um, I put, I think, one or two sprays on my arm um, kind of in the early evening one day. And then um, I wore it the whole rest of that day, slept all night. And then when I woke up the next morning, I could still smell this on my skin, not even on clothing, on my skin. So this one is an absolute beast. This is called In White Intense. So there is an In White, which I believe is a men's fragrance, and then this In White, in white Intense is a, um, I think it's marketed towards women or it is considered unisex. I'm not totally sure, but um, this one is in the biggest box as well. And it just comes like this. It's a really pretty, um, very pretty opaque white bottle with this really pretty black uh, label and it does have the black lid. So that is In White Intense. This one is beautiful. Uh, oh gosh. This one does not have oud listed in the notes either, but I know there's oud in this. Or it didn't have oud listed in the notes on um, the Fragrance X website, which is where I picked this one up. But I can smell oud in this. I know there's oud in this. Oh, this is beautiful. This one definitely, oops. This one definitely smells uh, more unisex to me. It almost, to my nose, leans a little bit masculine but I don't mind it. This one is gorgeous. This one is going to be so good in the winter time. Even though this one could be definitely worn in the heat as well, this has got a beautiful, light, fresh quality to it. Ugh, beautiful. Okay, In White Intense is cardamom, bergamot, violet, green apple, lavender, clary sage, praline, patchouli, and cedar. Ugh, this one is so good. There is a strong lavender note in this. It is a beautiful, fresh, clean, strong lavender, which I adore. Oh, so beautiful. This has got the clary sage in it, and I am obsessed with clary sage as a note in fragrances. I love it so much. It just adds this beautiful, uh, like, aromatic quality to perfumes that I adore. This one is beautiful. It's fresh. And this one is an absolute beast. Two sprays and you will be good for the entire day. You will smell it forever. Ah, oh, beautiful. It's clean. Oh, I'm not getting a lot of the praline in this one. This has a touch of sweetness, but it's not overly sweet in any way. Oh, it's just beautiful. Very fresh, very clean. That lavender, the clary sage. A hint of sweetness from the praline. The violet, there's that crisp green apple note in the top, but you're not going to really smell the apple. You're just going to get the crisp quality from the apple. The patchouli is not overly strong. It's not, again, it's not earthy. It's not overpowering. It's just adding a really beautiful kind of, almost like a little bit of a spicy edge. It's just really beautiful. I really, really enjoyed all of these ones in these bottles. I really enjoyed. And now I want to get all of the other ones that are in these bottles that I didn't get this time, which I think I will. There's another one um, called, I think, just Korloff Woman that comes in like a gold bottle. Uh, there are a couple more, and in that price point, I'm definitely going to pick them all up because uh, the ones that come in those bottles are really nice. The ones that come in these bottles, um, these are beautiful. I enjoyed them. They're just not my cup of tea. Uh, these are, if you're a fan of fragrances like um, Poison Girl or and fragrances like uh, Trésor La Nuit, um, fragrances along those lines, I think you would really enjoy the fragrances that come in the boxes and the bottles like this. Uh, these are definitely more kind of along those lines. Um, those aren't my favorite types of fragrances, so that and I think that that's why those ones just don't resonate with me as much as the ones like Majestic Tuberose, which is kind of a 
you know, a spicy tuberose or the intense or even the mist, which has that beautiful rhubarb note in it. Um, yeah, I can definitely wholeheartedly recommend these ones in these bottles. I just think that they're really, really nice, especially for that $30 price point. Um, and again, I can totally recommend these as well, but just um, if you have that kind of taste in perfume. Again, the Poison Girl, the La Nuit, uh, fragrances like that. So anyways, guys, uh, that is my video on Korolev Paris fragrances, the ones that I picked up anyways. A huge thank you again to the lady who emailed me and um, kind of piqued my interest in those fragrances and gave me so much of that invaluable information on them as well. I really, really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.